Welcome to Raw Online Teaching Program. I am Dr. Monica, your pediatric faculty. So today, as a part of standard treatment guidelines given by the Indian Academy of Pediatrics, in that series of lectures, today's topic is going to be a very important and frequently asked uh, topic, which is nephrotic syndrome. So nephrotic syndrome, by definition, if you see, it is a triad. It is a triad of clinical findings. The first one is being edema and second is heavy proteinuria that is more than 1 gram per meter square daily or more than 40 milligram per meter square per hour and hypoalbuminemia which is serum albumin which is less than 3 grams per deciliter. So in the previous guidelines it is given as 2.5 grams per deciliter. So now it has been changed. It is now serum albumin less than 3 grams per deciliter. So, it is a triad of clinical findings with edema, proteinuria and hypoalbuminemia. Okay, so this change more than 3 grams per deciliter you should be knowing. So, this is regarding the definition of um, nephrotic syndrome. So, before Going in detail about the nephrotic syndrome, you should know the terminologies or the definitions which we are using in the context of nephrotic syndrome. So, if you see, the first and foremost is the remission. You know the definition of nephrotic syndrome, which is edema, proteinuria and hypoalbuminemia. So, in that, uh, once you start a treatment, when the child started showing the signs of improvement or when the child stopped the disease, progress that is called as remission. So, that remission is considered when the urine protein is nil or trace or the protein creatinine ratio should be less than 0.2 milligram per milligram in 3 consecutive early morning samples or 24 hours urine protein should be less than 100 milligram per meter square per day. So, these all the values and facts you should remember properly. So, this is considered to be a remission. When you call it as a relapse, when you call it as a relapse means again the disease progress has occurred. So, disease progress occurred means what? Urine protein creatinine ratio that is more than 2 milligram per milligram or by dipstick it is 3 plus 4 plus again for 3 consecutive early morning sample who have been under remission previously. So, so those children considered to be have relapsed. And next, what is mean by partial remission? So, not completely you know, stopped the disease progress or fully remi uh, relapsed. It is partial remission. So, partial remission is somewhere between urine lipstick between 1 plus 2 plus or urine protein creatinine ratio is between 0.2 to 0.2 uh, 2 milligram per milligram or 24 hours urine protein is between 4 to 40 milligram per meter square per day. But serum albumin is normal. It is more than 3 grams and there is absence of edema. So, this is only considered as a clinically the edema is not there and albumin is normal, but urinary changes are in the borderline. So, that is considered to be the partial remission. So, when you call it as a frequent relapses, when there are more than or equal to two relapses in six months from the initiation of the therapy or more than equal to three relapses in 12 months period. So, this is considered to be the frequent relapses. When you call it as a steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome. So, when you are giving a daily steroid and after that you are alternating for next 6 weeks and while the child is on the alternate day steroids, they show two consecutive relapses or when you stopped the 12 weeks therapy, within 2 weeks of discontinuation of the therapy, again there is a relapse. So, that means the child is steroid dependent. And when you call it as a steroid resistant, when there is a complete lack of remission despite therapy with a daily prednisolone for 6 weeks at a dose of 2 mg per kg that is 60 mg per meter square. So, that child is considered to be a steroid resistant that is initial steroid resistance. Next coming to the next set of terminologies uh, that is a complicated relapse. So, what, when you call it as a complicated relapse, relapse as I already explained. Relapse is protein dipstick is 3 plus 4 plus or protein creatinine ratio 2 milligram per milligram and 3 consecutive sample. So, when this relapse is associated with a 
life threatening complications like the child may have hypovolemia requiring inpatient care or the child showing severe infection in the form of peritonitis cellulitis or meningitis or the child is presenting with one of the complication of nephrotic syndrome which is thrombosis so if this is present then it is considered to be if any one is present then it is considered to be a complicated relapse so what you when you call it as a congenital nephrotic syndrome when the onset of nephrotic syndrome is within the first 3 months of life then it is considered to be a congenital nephrotic syndrome so another two terminologies which you will be knowing uh, should be knowing in the context of nephrology nephrotic syndrome are significant steroid toxicity and difficult to treat steroid sensitive disease so since that child is on long term steroids definitely you should be looking for the signs and symptoms suggestive of steroid toxicity so what are all those steroid toxicity which is considered significant or hyperglycemia number 1 hyperglycemia means fasting glucose more than 100 mg per deciliter or pp more than 140 mg per deciliter or hba1c more than 5.7 so when these criteria is fulfilled then it is hyperglycemia second one is look for obesity obesity is body mass index more than equal to 27 kg per meter square as of in adults and third is short stature that is height is less than two standard deviations for the age and height velocity is less than three standard deviation for the age so this is considered as short stature and next is raised iop or the intraocular pressure and cataracts myopathies and osteonecrosis on psychosis so these are all the systemic significant steroid toxicity features and coming to difficult to treat steroid sensitive disease so when you have the definition for difficult to treat steroid sensitive it should uh, say, uh, satisfy the two criteria one is they should be frequent relapsers frequent relapsers means as i already explained more than two episodes in first six months of therapy or in uh, one year more than three episodes three or more than three episodes considered to be frequent relapse so the child is frequently relapsing and also showing failure to more than two steroid sparing agents so if these both criteria are fulfilled then those children coming under the category of difficult to treat steroid sensitive disease or else they are having only infrequent relapse but any of the above significant steroid toxicity features have been seen along with two steroid sparing agents failure so they are also considered to be difficult to treat steroid sensitive disease so these are all the various terminologies that has been used in the context of nephrotic syndrome